Hello, everyone, and welcome to my show, Angie Gavitt Show. I'm your host, Angelique, the diva Everett. This is my Art of Agatha episode of my show and YouTube channel. The Art of Agriculture for Family Advocates. I am drilled and got the opportunity to sit and chat with my wonderful and amazing friends and my two special guests. BJ Stachio, he is a president of self, uh, self-advocates of NYS and former host for some advocacy in action TV show. Mr. Donatelli is a family advocate, is retired from Baker Victory. I hope I say that right. Victory. That's right. That's right. Services after 42 years in various leadership roles and former executive director of Parent Network of Western New York, which I used to work at, by the way. Oh, you did? Good. Yeah, you were my boss. <laughs> I guess you must have forgot. No. <laughs> um, oh, hello, BJ and Mr. John Tony. So glad to have y'all on my channel and YouTube channel. Thank you. Please call me Max. <laughs> Well, I do. I give you the proper respect, but I call you Mr. Donatelli, so. Okay, that's whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, BJ, tell me about BJ, and both of y'all can answer, so. Uh, and and not, I'm the past president of the any, the self Advocacy Association Board of Directors. I am the first vice president now of the board of directors just for clarification i don't want to take anything away from a new and awesome president so that's just clarification about me and i've been a long time advocate and activist i always look look at myself as an activist first so you know necessary trouble is good trouble i always say Yeah, I would agree, BJ. <laughs> you are definitely an activist and definitely trouble at times, but good trouble. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I definitely agree about that. Yes. <laughs> he can be a handful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. But mm-hmm. I know I can be too at times, so I can't That's think right. about that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, uh, uh, well, Mr. Donatelli, you can uh, you can answer the same question. So, okay, so yeah, I may. Um, <clears throat> as you mentioned, I I did work in the human services field. I did work with Baker Victory Services. I did work with Parent Network of Western New York, and I'm a parent of uh, uh, two two children, Connie Donatelli and Craig Donatelli. Uh, Craig has uh, Down syndrome. And uh, Craig is a um, 34 years old. He's uh, he's living apart from us. He's living in a self-directed, semi-independent living situation. That yesterday we celebrated 10 years of him being away from uh, mom and dad, and uh, living uh, up in Amherst. We live in Hamburg, and um, uh, he's living up there with um, five other young men, uh, and uh, he. Uh, lives up there, has a nice quality of life. Uh, he's able to get out, uh, do things that he likes to do. Um, and uh, he also uh, works um, two, two days a week at uh, Explore and More Children's Museum. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been big, big advocates for inclusion and wanting to see people with developmental disabilities able to be out in the community and working and being able to do the kind of things that they like to do. And uh, so Craig is, you know, is, is right now enjoying a very nice quality of life. So that's a little bit about, you know, what we do. Well, that's a good thing. I, I, actually, I actually love you, sir. He's really nice. 
<laughs> oh, thank you. Last time I seen him. So. Mm-hmm. And I love that museum. It's blowing more. I've been there. Uh, I forgot when I've been. I think it was last year when I've been there. Mm-hmm. The museum. Yeah. That's a cool place. I can't wait to go back there. Probably next time I go, I can actually take my book with me. So. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Well, yeah. He works on Sundays and Wednesdays. So go when he's working. <laughs> okay. You know I will. <laughs> <laughs> um all right. Oh uh, uh BJ, what is your role and what do you do for art of agriculture? Well, it's not it's not really a role, Angelique. It's more of a uh a mission slash legacy that I share with Matt to build the future of advocacy amongst the ag the advocates who I know and Max's Max's mission is to build future family advocates and help them build the skills to talk to those elected officials that work for us and hopefully with us to get what we need for those with IDD, the the people who receive services and the families with loved one who receive services. So it's kind of a mission and a legacy of mine and Max's. And I'm glad to be working with such an awesome advocate as Max because we we worked on this for a long time during COVID, many times at our favorite place, Wonder Coffee. So <laughs> it's uh, good to see it to come, to come to fruition and finally be where it is now. That's good. Speaking of COVID, how are y'all doing with COVID. Well, you know, I had uh, I I uh, got COVID, but I made it through. I have some long haul stuff going on, but I'm making it through. It's all right. At least at least I'm still alive and gonna gonna throw up some necessary trouble, good trouble. You know, that, that's a good thing. At least you're well and safe and drink a lot of water. Mm-hmm. I don't yep. know about a lot of water, but I'm here. No, Lord. well, you know it's healthy for you, BJ. You should be drinking lots of water now. And I know Mr. Tony will agree with me about that now too. Yes, 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 yes. Water is a good thing. I got mine. <laughs> and oh, and Mr. Jones, are you going to actually uh, answer that same question? What have you done uh, with this COVID? Well, with COVID. Um, Actually, we got it early. Craig Joyce and I got it early on. Um, it was relatively mild, uh, only a couple days. And, uh, you know, so we were actually counted ourselves pretty uh, lucky. Uh, didn't come back. We got ourselves uh, uh, vaccinated. Uh, we've got the boosters and all that uh, when they came available. And uh, so, you know, so we've actually been pretty lucky by and large. So, um, and as BJ mentioned, it was a real pleasure in a lot of ways to be able to do something during COVID when people were really kind of hunkered down and, you know, kind of, uh, you know, many people being isolated. BJ and I were actually able to, you know, uh, many times we were able to meet in person at, uh, as you mentioned, at Water Coffee. And, um, uh, and, and that's where we really developed the art of advocacy because there is such a great need for uh, um, more advocates, uh, people with developmental disabilities, as well as family members being able to be better advocates. Um, and, you know, and certainly, you know, it's been a pleasure working with BJ likewise, um, because he is such a strong advocate. Um, and, you know, some of the, the testimony that he's given, um, you know, to the uh, New York State Senate and and other uh, places where he's, you know, given his testimonies and been able to work at worked alongside him with legislators and and other uh, advocates at rallies and so on. Um, it is so important for people to realize that you know the uh, that the people don't get a quality of life and and you know be able to do the kind of things that they need to, to be able to do in the community unless there's 
you know, the opportunities are there. And as advocates, we want to make sure that those opportunities are there for everyone, including those with developmental disabilities, which is why we, you know, we created the Art of Advocacy. And, and, and we can talk a little more about that as well. Okay. Uh, so, BJ, I, when I was on your Facebook page, and I had to ask this question. Uh, I know that you met the governor, Kathy Hoko. How was it like meeting Kathy Hoko? Well, that would be the second, the second time we uh, met. The first time I gave her, she gave her an art of the band, so, and uh, the second time was just a picture opportunity. I'm just surprised and glad she remembered who I was, and I told her, Thank you for what you do for people with IDD, even though this budget cycle, there wasn't much in the budget for those with IDD. It was more mental health issues, which is important, too, as a person who is duly diagnosed. But my primary diagnosis is my IDD. So I said, thank you for all you do for those with IDD, the individuals and the families that you're supporting. But don't forget to ever support people with IDE. And she said, thank you for doing what you do. And that's where we left it. So, And it was a nice picture we took together. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I, love, I love the picture. When I saw the picture on the Facebook page, I'm like, oh, I definitely got to ask this question. <laughs> and I remember the first time you had met her, you were talking about your campaign. I can I remember I interviewed you on my show, uh, I think it was last year on your campaign. I forgot the name of the campaign. It yeah, was. It, was called, it was called the Rise Up Campaign, Angelique. Oh, yeah. yeah I remember that campaign. I, we, I, all still I, need, we, we all still need to rise up and create change together. That's what we need to do. I definitely agree about that. I still uh, got my band. My band is on. <laughs> rise up. <laughs> yes, I see that. Everybody should rise up. Oh, I know where I am. I at. Oh, yeah. As president of Art of Agriculture, what type of things that you do and what are your duties and responsibilities, uh, BJ? Well, it's just to share the information and impart the knowledge that Max and I have compiled together or separately because we don't always meet with with people together sometimes i meet with people sometimes max meets with people it's just to let let people know how important advocacy is and the art of advocacy is it's just a tool in somebody's toolbox to use to become a better advocate you don't have to be a systems advocate you can advocate for yourself to have a better life. That's where system change starts because the system provides us the services to have that better life or it's supposed to, you know. And it's important to speak up at your life plans and that was one of the things that I think Max and I both were concerned about. Are people speaking up at their life plans? After all, in the Self-Advocacy Association, it's nothing about us without us. So, and that that's that's an important thing. And it's not really a president, vice president role. It's just co-creators working together to build the future of advocacy. Because Max and I are not going to be doing this forever. We want to pass it along to future generations, so we can just watch the system change from from there. Because I want to give other people an opportunity to have their voices be heard if they've never been given the opportunity to say anything. Oh, well, that's a good thing. Okay, like passing the torch, I would say, a little bit. Yes. Yeah, yes. I agree about that. And as you had mentioned about advocating for the, the life plan stuff, I was just advocating for myself this morning by calling my... Uh, my uh, clinic I go to for the doctors and stuff. I advocate. So it's good that you said that. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. All right, now we are Mr. John and Charlie. Uh, what is the art of agriculture, and what are your responsibilities, Mr. John and Charlie? Yeah, thanks, uh, Angelique. Yeah, what we've what we've really created, and, and we really wanted to. Um, when BJ, you know, has been in a leadership position with Sainis, you know, and and you know, really wanted to help to build greater capacity for future leaders, uh, is is really why we created in the first place. Uh, I also did want to see more family members being able to, um, you know, get the kind of things that they needed for their sons or daughters, being able to get them included as much as possible in community, being able to, uh, you know, uh, not be separated from from their peers or isolated, but being able to live life, you know, in in the community. And, you know, and, and the uh, the, the way that we decided to do it is we, we used a model that uh, Craig and I had a number of years ago. We took Taekwondo together, which is one of the martial arts, and uh, we took it uh, for about uh, three years. And Craig and I went from white uh, belt all the way up to black. And we were working on our blacks, when, you know, back black belts when we left. It, it is a really good model of, of learning and teaching um, and what we wanted to try to do was we were able to um, use the, this model and, and rather than using belts, we're using uh, black, or we're using wristbands. Uh, as you can see, I have a, ri- a black wristband on and, um, you know, and we're using those to, you know, kind of symbolize, you know, when persons go from learning something from a, um, you know, from a, um, uh, you know, very basically learning uh, how to become a, uh, a good advocate, um, you know, which is at the white level, and then being able to um, uh, be able to then move on to yellow um, you know, with support from a mentor. And uh, we're really looking with the resources we've been able to develop uh, rubrics all the way from white, all the way up through to a black uh, band level. Ooh. And uh, which is, um, you know, and, and at each of those levels, people learn different things along the way. And uh, so, so that's, you know, something that we've been able to try to do to um, you know, be able to um, uh, help people learn how to become better advocates, and uh, so um, you know that's that's a little bit of a kind of oversimplified way of of what we're doing, and we do have a lot of really good um, uh, uh, resources. And right now, we're working with various organizations, statewide organizations as well as local organizations such as uh, People Inc., and uh, we're. Um, we're able to, um, you know, through those organizations, help them to be able to identify mentors within organizations, and then being able to then learn, you know, how they can then, you know, work with those that really don't know a lot about advocating for themselves, and then also those that can do it, be able to advocate at the system level, like, you know, like BJ and myself have been doing now for years. Well, that's good. And Taekwondo just seems kind of interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm done. I'm all done. Okay, done. Uh, what is the mission and vision of Art of Agriculture? It's just to build the future of what advocacy should and could look like and to help people have the richer lives that they so greatly deserve, not only as people with IDD, but U.S. citizens, you know, just to make sure they have the life that they want instead of what the systems they live in tell them they should get. Yeah, exactly. And that, and that's really what we're trying to do is we're really trying to help um, those that, you know, really want to be able to learn advocacy and learn how to advocate and get, you know, make life better for themselves themselves, whether it be a parent or whether it be a person with a disability. Um, but we really want to try to, to, to help to give them the tools that they need uh, to be able to, to live a better life. And, and when they're, once they're able to live those better lives, then those that can do it, be able to um, you know, work in systems and work with folks like ourselves um, you know, to be able to get out and um, uh, 
work with governmental folks, work with the media, uh, work with whoever it is to, to be able to help with systems change because we really want to, to people to realize that the, the laws that are there um, to protect people with, with disabilities, such as the Americans with Disabilities Act and uh, 504 and, and you know other uh, IDEA and other laws that are there, those, th those laws did not come about very easily. Those laws were fought for. They were fought for by advocates. They were fought, they fought very hard. Uh, matter of fact, one of the things that we recommend is that people watch uh, a documentary called Crip Camp. And Crip Camp, and I don't know if you've seen that before, Angelique. I don't think so. I think I heard about it, but I don't think I've seen it. Okay, we're gonna send you, BJ and I will send you a link for it. It's on YouTube. It's free. Um, and uh, Judy Human, who is one of the uh, people that was very instrumental in it, unfortunately just died, unfortunately, uh, uh, back in March. And, and BJ, who's met her, knows her, uh, you know, can, can speak a little more eloquently than I can about her. But um, people need to know that we have to continue to carry the torch from people like her and others that she worked with in order to get those laws that are on the books at the federal level for protections for people with disabilities. You know, we need to continue that because it's not just going to happen by itself. It's going to happen where people take action. And BJ, you can talk more about Judy and Crip Camp. Yes, uh, Crip Camp was basically a uh, camp, camp in that it was, it was established in the in the mid 60s and closed in the beginning of the 70s. And it was a camp for uh, disabled campers. And there were a bunch of teenagers that got together and started talking. And what happened was some of the teenagers stayed in touch and they traveled to uh, Berkeley, California, for example, like Judy and this other lady did, Nancy. And they helped Ed Roberts start the independent living movement in California. And then it became, it became a movement with the, with the longest sit-in to fight for a regulation to be, to be followed through 504, which makes buildings accessible, you know, accessibility to subway trains. And that was the longest sit and it was actually 32 completed days and there and they had the black panthers help them and it was great you know they went to washington to talk to elected officials to make sure that 504 got passed and it actually got signed into law without them knowing about it so but a lot of a lot of that national movement happened because of what Judy crew did in that building in San Francisco to bring awareness to disability rights and disabilities issues. And it just shows it doesn't have to be all about disabilities because it took a community like the Black Panthers and others to help make that sit-in happen. It, because even when you do a sit-in or a protest, you still need the support to make sure you're healthy and safe during your protest and really took a community effort. Like one of the businesses, the secretary called and got some mattresses for people to lay on, you know, and it was just a really good time. I would like to see some, a, more, a lot more of that happen because that's the way things that's the way things change, and that's the way things happen now. You don't always have to protest. You can just go and talk to your elected officials and show up at rallies. Don't wait for somebody else to do it. If you have something to say, you need to show up as the advocates I know you are that are watching this show today. I definitely agree about that. Mm -hmm. You heard that, my, my, my viewers. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, well, Miss, uh, well, I'm just gonna have to say math because every time I say Mr. Jones, it's like, okay. Uh, <laughs> Max, um, how are you helping veteran advocates with learning new skills and goals? Well, I think it's it's kind of a um, it's a two way street in some ways because we actually learn things from other advocates also when we're working with them. Um, we met uh, BJ and I met with folks from the Alliance for um, uh, Inclusion and Innovation at the state level, and uh, BJ has a really good relationship with uh, with one of the leaders there, Michael Seawriter. And uh, as we w- had a discussion and talked about how we could work with them to help them to learn the art of advocacy from the model that we're using. We're, we're learning things from them as well, from other uh, veteran advocates as, as well. And uh, so it's, it's one of those things where it's a, you know, it, it's a, it's kind of a two way street, um, you know, where we're learning as, as well as we go along, but we plan to work with as many organizations that are interested in, in helping those that they're, that are, they're supporting, um, you know, to be able to help them to become better advocates. And, um, you know, and we certainly have, I think, a lot of good tools. Uh, we're compiling new information as we meet with other folks, too. And uh, we're really trying to share the wealth of, of information. And like I said, the many times people assume that legislators know these issues and they don't necessarily know the issues unless people talk about it. Uh, we really try to help people talk about their story. And, you know, and that's, you know, many times when you have, you know, 20 minutes or even a half an hour, if you can, if you're meeting with the legislator or legislative staff people, um, you need to know the right things to say so that they understand, you know, what the issues are. And, you know, for example, when, you know, Craig has met with uh, Karen McMahon, who's an assembly uh, person uh, that is on the disability committee in the New York State Assembly, uh, BJ is, or, I'm sorry, Craig is, has invited uh, Karen over to his house. She's had an opportunity to meet with the guys there, to meet with the staff. Uh, and so she has some kind of an idea of what Craig's situation is. It's not a certified uh, group home. It's a self-directed, semi-independent living situation. It's relatively newer. And uh, so, you know, so she is very familiar with, you know, what Craig's situation is and what his experience is. And he's even asked her to, to be a part of his life plan. Mm. So, uh, so she has attended, um, you know, his life plan meeting. Um, and so she's really familiar with what some of the issues are. So as a legislator, she's informed about disability issues uh, because she's hearing it directly from, from Craig as well as from, from Joyce and I. Well, that, that's good. He's really advocating for himself. That's a good time. Yep. And speaking of, of Craig, uh, I, like I said, I was on your Facebook. I seen the photo of you and Craig doing a presentation. So how mm-hmm. did that uh, presentation go with you and uh, Craig? Well, that was actually, it was a while ago. It was at a, a Saney's conference. Uh, we got invited to speak at the uh, Saney's conference. And uh, so we um, uh, had, uh, you know, met with the, from Saney's uh, representatives from all over the state. And uh, Craig got up and he talked about, you know, his experience of, you know, moving away from mom and dad, you know, being able to live with, uh, you know, other uh, young men around his age, being able to go out and do things together with them, being able to go out to the, um, they have a personal trainer at Catalyst Fitness and they, um, you know, uh, get out and, you know, are doing, you know, things in the community, Talks talked about his job. He was working at Denny's at the time and uh, he was bussing tables. He did that for about nine years. And uh, so, I mean, he, he talked about, about that, I mean, he was he he got up to that microphone and talked with a lot of confidence, and uh, he was um, you know really you know well received by the 
you know, by the other uh, self-advocates that were there at the conference. And uh, so it was, you know, we were very proud of Craig. And that's the reason why we share that picture when we can. <laughs> uh, so he's, you can have that picture. I'm like, okay. Yeah, he really yeah. doing it all right. Okay. That's right. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> all right, y'all. Now, this is my shout out section. I love to actually make a shout out during my show. So uh, mm -hmm. I want to make a special shout out to myself. I have my very own special podcast as well than just my show. It's called Angelique Podcast. Um, Y'all can now go to either Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Pandora. So, I'm um, Mara Fishy. Have a podcast. I am your host, Angelique, and this has been another episode of Angelique Everett Show. I want to say thanks to my special guest, BJ and Mr. Donatelli. So thanks, thanks again, fellas, for coming out. Okay. Well, we loved we love meeting with you, Angelique, and always great to talk about advocacy. So um, we really appreciate it, and we will send you Crip Camp. Okay. And we want you to, and we want you to watch it and let us know what you think of it. You know, I definitely will let y'all know. Now, right. don't forget to use Angelique Show to like me on Facebook. Follow me on right. Instagram at Angelique Everett Show. And subscribe, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Angelique Everett Show. Or go to my website, AngeliqueShow.com. I'm Angelique, and I'm rocking it. <laughs>